Yes! Welcome to one of the most joyous occasions of the year. Is I, one of the most prolific partiers of all time. I am the Techno Blue Ranger, and I am here with my bub bub. How? Why can't this? Oh, why can't I? Oh, there, there we go. Oh. Oh, wow, it's empty anyway. Oh, well, I must have been partying a little too hard. A little bit. Because I'm the Techno Blue Ranger. So hit my music. And yes, I'm here because it is New Year's Eve. The only reason I show up, the only times I show up, is when it's time to celebrate something. Such as, well, Halloween. New Year's Eve, Mardi Gras. So I'm here for a celebration. This is the New Year's Day Intergender Wrestling Challenge here at the Daytona Beach Bonefight Wrestling League. So you will see names such as Evil Tom, Mistress Heather, Seth Rollins, Wait, Triple H? What are they doing here? But again, with this stipulation, the winning team, they get the challenge for their gender's respective titles tomorrow for the New Year's Day Bash here at the Daytona Beach Fun Fight League. Again, with this video, we have a little special cooking with Hobo Tom again. He makes a Philly-style cheesesteak pizza. I'll tell you what, if I could figure out how to eat or drink with this thing, I'd probably want to partake of that as well, as well as some of the bubbly. So again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching for the year and a half that Hobo Tom has been doing this. Again, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And tomorrow, you people up in Jacksonville, keep an eye out for Hobo Tom. He wears a ugly yellow hobo shirt. He looks kind of disgusting. He looks like a hobo. Again, you'll see him tomorrow at AEW up at the Daily Theater in Jacksonville, Florida. Other than that, be safe. Don't be a loser. Do not drive drunk. Do not put hobos' lives in danger by recklessly driving your car while intoxicated. Other than that, Again, enjoy the bubbly and enjoy the matches and cooking show. Good night. Hello, folks. Welcome again to another presentation of the Daytona Beach Bum Fight League. You always know this is the Daytona Beach Bum Fight League because I do things on such such hoboish like fashion. This is the New Year's Intergender Tag Team Tournament. And here you can see the brackets. Um, 2K17 doesn't let you do intergender tag team tournaments, which I don't know. I'm okay with, I'll just make them. So, it's gonna happen in our first match, in the first bracket. We have Dr. Tom teaming up with La Generica, taking a Taj and Princess Ikochi. Remember, there are stakes involved for this intergender match. The representatives of their tag team actually get to face their respective genders champion in the New Year's Bash. The New Year's Sobering Up event tomorrow. At the beach here in the Daytona Beach um, Quasi Live. So let's get to the action, folks. And here we are at Daytona Beach. It's a beautiful day for some reason. Wait, this is Florida. There is, there, there is no snow here. Uh, there's the police APC. You can tell there's a bicycle rack barricade. Look at the, all those drunks and hookers and strippers and, and meth addicts and God knows what else there. Dr. Tom privileges these people by coming in. Remember, this is the intergender challenge match. The winner of this tournament 
that will actually de de will actually finish up to today. Will actually determine who goes on to face their genders' respective champions. So first we have the one, the only Doctor Tom and his partner. Oh, we have the generic Mexican luchadore, La Generica. Oh, we're so close to it. too bad, I guess. Yeah, I'm gonna color for that. That's pretty cool. I like good Lucha Dorex. Lita. See here, and who do they start off facing today? Whoa! Stop! El Dorado. Thanks for joining us for this matchup brought to you by 2K Sports. I love the people at 2K Sports. Well, I've been looking forward to this one for a long time. I'm surprised that I came from Parks Unknown to be here. That's the best sign ever. And who's his partner? Whoa! We haven't seen her in a while. When did she have that belt? Man, I gotta fix this. I was really bored some hurricane, I guess. As we get ready for this match, I'd like to remind everyone that you can now get your copy of WWE 2K at retailers around the world. Oh, big tips. Whoa, look at that tramp stamp. I'm having a hard 
hard time figuring out what they're going to do next. Me too. I'm giving up even trying to figure out what they're going to do next. I'm just sitting back watching and enjoying. Oh, one of the most effective moves in all of WWE. And Wild Strong cover here. Not every day you get the team and superstars together, but when you do, you know it's going to be exhilarating. Look at this! Great! Well, that was a wild strike. Talk about missing the target. Yeah, it looked like it was completely out of desperation. domination here. Some highlights from the match. 
What are you so happy, she's fucked. Here are the winners! And they won a contest. We definitely they look happy. One for the ages. I'll remember that one for a long time. Yeah, they look good. There, oh. And tonight's action will have repercussions all across WWE. Oh, well, you got that right, Cole, but what a night it was. Okay, so Dr. Tom and La Generic can move on. I'm inserting myself. For I, the broken one, I'm inserting myself into the picture. Therefore, I shall have all the belts. And also the end of the bridge can't get. Give your copy of WWE 2K at retailers around the world. Don't worry, I've already got mine. Look out! This one's gonna be intense. Seven thirty sounds right. We didn't just stare at that belt with pure disdain. So I don't even care about this belt. This belt's garbage. I'm wearing the only belt that matters. And that's the Under the Bridge Championship belt. For these people, I've graced them. For they are all my broken minions. Yes! But I am Breaker of Men. The Breaker of Hobos. I find it funny. Yeah, that'd be fucking magic nice too. What are you doing pacing around me, Chispa? Making a video. Being silly. Fuzzy butt. Fuzzy butt. Well, it's been a while since Mr. Southern was around. Whoa! I forgot I gave her that outfit! Whoa! What was I thinking? Oh, I know exactly what I was thinking. Jeez, I did a big tits. What was I? What was I thinking of, please, bro? Whoa! Oh wow. So I like that honey hole with that shot. Oh wait. It's funny funny that I have to come here. It's funny funny that I have to be surrounded by police and army personnel carriers. Let me lose! It's all about the game. Are you playing? It's all about the game. Take it. All about the game. And they're going to first from Greenwich, Connecticut. Also, this video is going to take a while. It's funny, funny, but I have to be here. It wasn't for the beach. Why are they really stand for it? Oh, that's right, it's snowing up there. That's a crowd on its feet as we're about to get this one underway. Please do not start to hard break that crust.
Alex Reyes. You never call it. What are you doing? Yeah, this is the other video game concept for this part. This is the new Hobo office. Well, this is like the extension of the Hobo office. You're playing a fuzzy button, I think. I'm really pressing it like this and I played the video games in there. Jeez, Triple H gives himself a huge entrance. Well, obviously we know who his tag team partner is going to be. It's got smaller. Hopefully this is a quick entrance, folks. Stephanie McMahon makes her way to the match. Here we go, guys. Ha-ha, <laughs> this is going to be great. Oh, I know what I can have you do. I can have one but you. Swinging for the fences and missing. When we talk about the career of the game, I think about 
seen as a superstar before and was even a member of this company. Triple H is trying to survive, trying to make a name for himself. Seeing what he's accomplished, I can only imagine how proud his teacher, George Kowalski, would be of him today. The tag is made. Shot was dialed in. Going for it all here. God, look at that ass shot. Executed perfectly. And check out the look of satisfaction in those eyes. Michael, people refer to Triple H however they choose. Whether you cheer for him or boo him, you can't take anything away from everything he's done. I mean, that's it. It's over. It's over. Back into the ring now. Yeah, this is good. This is where the action needs to be. Jack, of course, being from Greater Britannia. The following contest is scheduled for a fall on the way to the ring from Newcastle upon Tyne. We need it. That's so good. Big matchup here tonight in this arena is electric. Oh, fun, she's fun. Can feel this crowd. Make no mistake about it. This match will be one for the ages. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. Oh, and who's his partner going to be? He's going to hate me for this. This is going to be cool. Second, isn't this gimmick infringement? Did the WWE already do this? Alicia Fox! Oh, Alicia Fox! Alicia Fox. Oh, Alicia Fox. oh, wait a second, they did this like last year. With no, I'm darn Alicia Fox. What, what is this hobo doing in these decisions on, on who to team with who? We have Alicia Fox! It's bum slips. Man, she just likes those guys from across the pond. It's been, um, Wayne, Wade Barrett, um, Noam Dar, and now Bum Slicks. She's what are those men across the, what's this? He's obviously was here by accident on vacation or something. Burn it down! But what's it back to bump slips though? And the British people, what, what power do they have over Alicia Fox? You can feel the hate. Oh, it's so terrible. She's reaction. He's like, he has hate because he doesn't want to be here. 
Did it be a lot of fun? What's up, more fan? More tan. Alicia's a fox. More than foxy. Uh, oh, I thought I said more tan. <laughs> I should get more tan. So sad. And you went to Daytona Beach. Did Becky finally get a tan? Oh, that's terrible. I'm in so much trouble. She's supposed to not even funny. Oh, 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 oh. Wow, I could have made a better Becky than she now. Here we go. WWE action on the way. Let's get it started. Talk about making an entrance. Oh, 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 Focus on the woman. What are we going to see here? Alicia Fox has been one step ahead thus far. Quick thinking to avoid that. Tell me your thoughts on Alicia Fox. Alicia Fox has eyes to finish. I can't tell you how many victims have suffered the same fate. Well, this looks it's not looking good for you and your partner here. Oh, whoa. 
Bombs looks might be dead here, Bring folks. Blade. I'm having a hard time figuring out what they're going to do next. Me too. Uh -oh. I've given up even trying to figure out what they're going to do next. I can't tell you. The bomb sticks got busted open. Oh no. No. Bomb sticks might be dead. This might be it. Uh oh. Oh, curb stomp. That's not good. This is not good for the bomb sticks. Here. Looks like he's dead, folks. Uh -oh. Alicia, help me out. Alicia, folks! It's not every day you get the demon and superstar together, but when you do, you know it's going to be exhilarating. No, you should have done something, Alicia. You're right there. Supposed to grab him. That's gotta be it. Here's a cover. This match has been 100 miles per hour since the opening bell. A great counter. Taken some abuse here, but nothing that can't be shaken off. Go where it goes. Oh man, this has got to hurt. Oh, Slicks, who gave up? Oh man. Seth and Becky. Whoa. I'm supposed to bust it open though, man. That's not cool. Burn it down! I feel this is progressing pretty good. Kind of shocked. I want to see the lives shut now. What do we know about these two? Oh, I mean, that's one of my eyeballs. The sequel tonight makes me think they spend a great deal of time together. And it'll be interesting to see how this affects this way. Whoa, what prophetic words by the king. Wow. Uh-oh. Oh my god, I drew like a Mormon. I have heard big tits too, huh? The following team is just coming. Goody Goody Heather! Oh wow, we haven't seen Goody Goody Heather in a while. The 
WWE Universe has been waiting for weeks now, and here we are. This one is going to be great. Oh, I cannot wait. Let's get it going. Doesn't appear to be showing any signs of intimidation heading into this one. Well, not that I actually thought we would see any. Well, who are they facing? What? Oh, yes! 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 Whoa, it's old Daniel Bryan, though, not the American Dragon. Oh, for Easter, I think we had Princess Kimberly. He may be surprised. What an entrance. This is who a large number of these fans in attendance came to see tonight. <laughs> and who's his partner going to be? Wait a second. Rainbow! Actually, it's, it's Brie Danielson. As we get ready for this match, I'd like to remind everyone that you can now get your copy of WWE Brian Danielson. It's Miss Danielson, folks. Oh god, I just hope he doesn't botch anything out. So he doesn't concuss anyone or, or get concussed. Not necessarily the best worker in the ring, folks. Concussions. Uh oh, look at this! Evil Tom is just trying to kill Daniel Bryan! So that's what it's like being so far off the mark. And so what are your thoughts right now on Daniel Bryan? Looking for the win! Oh my god. Are we going to witness like murder here? Is Evil Tom going to... Drop Daniel Bryan on his head twice already. These oh. oh, it doesn't get much better than that right there. Oh, again, right to the head. Each of these competitors is looking for the slightest. Is this a shoot? In the other. Well, that's is Evil Tom shooting on Daniel Bryan? If you ever see a weakness in your opponent, you got to jump on it. Nobody home there. Nobody home. Inside the ring now, finally. Let's get this done inside the ring. Seven. This match is being televised around the world in 18 languages, and Daniel Bryan hit that one. Oh, that's it. That's got to be it. Daniel Bryan. Now that's a finishing move right there, people. The tag is made. The tag is made. Great counter. Oh, wait. Nice reversal. Oh, wait. Nice reversal. Brie Bella starting to falter some. But no matter what we say outside the ring, it doesn't matter as much as what happens inside that ring.
surpassed the ring of the thousands and thousands of WWE fans in attendance. Oh! Back from that. Wow, that was a wild strike. Talk about missing the target. Yeah, it looked like it was completely out of desperation. There's going to be a lot of offense in this match. Wouldn't have it any other way. That's what I love to see. Look at this. Looks like another check in the wind column. Looks like 
somebody walks back in this match. Here's a couple. And a kick out. Uh, the kick out's all that's saving. This match goes on. Wow, what a display of heart and determination. Getting to the ropes there. And a kick out. And that's all that matters. This match continues. Just when you thought it was over. Wow. Wow. What a display of heart and determination. Nice dodge there. Not today. Too fast. There may be no fighting out of this. Wow. It doesn't get much better than that right there. It could be over here. Yeah, maybe. The shoulders up in time. Well, as long as it's up before that three count, that's all that matters. Just when you thought it was over. Wow! Wow! What a display of heart and determination. Get some air here. I need some too after sitting next to you. That wild strike back. Is it enough to put an end to this one? Oh, this will ring. Wow! It doesn't get much better than that right there. Unbelievable! Daniel Bryan is. Oh, that's going to put an end to this one. Good match. That was practically a five-star match. Okay, here we go, folks. Into our second round here at the at the New Year's New Year's um, intergender matches here. The New Year's Eve intergender challenge. We got previously Dr. Tom and Latin America defeated uh, Taj and Princess Eva here. Just had to take a quick little break. They just reset themselves. Actually, start clicking. Ideally, I'd like to have this video sort of like I mean, already. Right. I went to the gym and I started cooking my pizza. Because cooking pizza is kind of a little bit more important than this. Ooh, okay. And the tag team partner from Wadi Chihuahua, Mexico. Big match up here tonight, and this arena is electric. Oh, man, you can feel this crowd. Expecting plenty of highlight reel material in this one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I see cheese, but don't worry. <clears throat> I've come from parts and known to be here. That's the best sign ever. Oh, shoot. 
That's okay. Angry looking at the visual. Tag is made. 
This match may end right here. You have to think that's it. Nobody home there. Nobody home? Oh, that looked like the house has been empty for months. Oh, that's going to put an end to this one. God, there was nothing accurate about that attempt at offense. Oh, you're being too kind. Some people would use other words to describe what we just witnessed. Look at this. This could be it. I'm having a... Nobody comes back from this. Each of these competitors is looking for the slightest hit of weakness. Oh, and did you hear the impact? That's it! The match is over! Oh, no! The other semifinal, on the other side of the bracket, we have Evil Tom! Bye. 
the WWE Universe on its feet, looking forward to this great match. That's up, so, that's that's up for fighting. Seth Rollins and Becky Lynch taking on Dr. Tom and La Generica. Whoa, who's booking the show? Whoa, that was unforeseen. That was weird too. Yeah, way too weird. Here are your winners, the Impressive showing for the win tonight. What do we know about these two? I mean, do they travel together? They're yes, they do. They spend a great deal of time together. Yes, and they do. Repercussions all across WWE. Oh, well, you got that right, Cole, but what a night it was.
Whoa, what's that guy doing boy? He's like, yeah man, she's my hookup. I mean, they're good though. Jesse James and the Swans. I think I do. We're going to get our money's worth in this one. Regardless, people will look back on this night and tell stories to their grandkids about it. Like. 
Nobody home there. Nobody home? Cole, that looked like the house had been empty for great rehearsal. Dodges to the side of that one. And Becky's able to get out of the way. Uh, she was lucky there. That wild strike found nothing but empty air that time. <laughs> Man, that's what you call swinging for the fences and missing. The tag is made. Seth Rollins in some trouble here. But here's the thing. You have to perform if you want to bask in that WWE glory. I 
And those are folks on right now on the New Year's Day matches. It's going to go like this. It's going to be Corporate Tom versus the Techno Blue Ranger. Ranger Evil Tom versus the Demon Finn Balor. Little Fettuccini takes on Dan Blaze. Just this new team, the Hate Club, takes on the Cuba Connection. Tom Von Brake versus Dr. Tom. And Twisted Pixie, this is a long time lemesis, na la generica. Thank everyone for watching. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And look for Hello folks, welcome back to a hobo cooking show. I'm the one, the only hobo Tom. It is the feast of New Year's Eve, yes! And so for this episode, it's going to be, again, my kind of tradition in the house, you hear the water in the background, is that I always like to combine a little bit of steak and pizza, and I think I've been doing that for so long, held up. So, I'm going to be making a yummy, delicious cheesesteak pizza. In order to do that, this is probably the most complicated thing I ever make. You need one large mixing bowl. Um, don't take a look at my sink because it's terrible, but I have nice, kind of warm water on the warmer side. You don't want hot water because if you use hot water, you will actually kill yeast. And killing yeast is a bad thing. Killing yeast is murder. So what you want to do, um, you can measure it. I don't care. I like to use fast acting yeast. Fast acting yeast, it doesn't matter what brand. Just yeast. I can get as much in there as I can. Back there's nothing left in there. Just back for another purpose. Probably for Easter when I make something you look delicious. Yeast. Until they're dormant right now, they need a little bit of sugar, sugar. Sugar, sugar. And eventually I have to put this in again, just kind of your everyday basic sugar. They need a food source in order to do their thing. The reason why I'm doing this now is because this process is probably the longest process. So now, let's kind of shake it up a little bit. And right now I'm adding in the warm water to my yeast slurry. I don't want to add too much because one, when I put in, oh, I have the good stuff for a change. The pizza crust, pizza crust. I think that was the only one they had. For a lot, so you get a fairly clean spoon. Mix this up a little bit. We're gonna activate the yeast. The water is nice and warm. There's sugars there. We're gonna activate that so that way. So here we have a little slurry going. See, there's some bubbles forming already. Actually, see, there's actually a couple bubbles forming. So I want this to get nice. And there's more bubbles forming. That's pretty cool. Bubbles are forming as I speak. Oh! What's up? Do you like pizza too, cheese pup? <laughs> She's confused. She doesn't know what's going on. So you have to let this activate. It takes about 15 minutes. So I'll be back. So I know it's been longer than 15 minutes. I had to make my video. You can see, tell Reese has been the, the yeast has been activated because it's all nice and bubbly. Put that there for a second. So now, 
I'm going to add in some pizza dough. And remember, the reason why I'm doing this now and then heading off to the gym is when I come home, I have to finish video, make video, edit characters. Well, no, no, I don't have to edit characters. Well, kind of do, but adding pizza dough. Then yeah, whatever kind of pizza dough you like. If you have your own special flour you like, you do not, however, want to add salt. Salt is bad. Salt will kill yeast. I really don't salt my dough. Because again, that's going to kill yeast. Killing yeast is bad, and I should have opened this over said bowl. No, it's not too bad, at least. Now for the yeast to work, it's magic. Let's see here. Let me change angle a little bit. I have my mixer, my trusty mixer, set up with bread hooks. I probably should not be doing this on the shirt. That's okay. In fact, no, it's not okay. I'm gonna be right back here, folks. Eventually, I'm going to add some things to this. Let's see here. Need this shirt for tomorrow. I don't know what I call it. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, there's a sock. Socko! Yep, I decided to change shirts. So again, very slowly start. And go a little faster. That's still a little too wet, but that's okay because what you can do, you can always add in, and I've done this in the past, because actually it does take a long time to fill stuff up, and I have so much of this stuff. I'm gonna add in just a little seasoned mix. And then it's okay if it happens. It's a good guess. It's a different piece of dough using so it's sewer. Had that for a while, so that's good. At least nothing came out of there. There were no critters in living in that, which is always a good sign. And something else I used up. Let's see here. So let's try and dry this out a little bit.
cosmic chain Only other thing I like to do, and this is just based on my preference, I always like to add a little olive oil. To me, it definitely adds some seasoning. Um, I prefer using the extra version, and you don't need that much, because not only does it add some flavor to it, but it actually provides a little, how do I do this? Did I get the broken one? Hmm. Odd. Oh, there we go. I knew it had to work somehow. Adds a little seasoning, and it also makes it a lot easier to pull out of the bowl eventually. So again, you don't need much. I'm gonna incorporate that in. So that's it. So again, I'm gonna set this aside to clean that up. This goes in the oven. Actually, what I should do, I should put let's see, 30 seconds. I was just trying to put a towel over it. And I like to put it in the oven only because the oven's always a little bit warmer and everything. Do not turn the oven on because that'll kill everything and set a fire. So this goes in for about one hour, and we'll be back to see, start making pizza. So there's the pan. We'll be back. Bye. Okay, welcome back. And as you can see, the pizza dough probably at least doubled in size over there. So that's always a good thing. So that means it's time to get the stuff ready. So here I have my pan. Because remember, you always want to. I always like to double proof my pan pizza. So what I'm going to do first, my pizza pan ready. It's like, this is actually the time where I add a lot of seasoning to it. Uh, first thing I do, take some margarine, a napkin, and it makes my life so much easier. Grease. You always grease up the pan. Very good. And not only do you grease the bottom of the pan, but what I figured out, if you grease the sidewalls of the pan as well, the crust tends not to stick and it gives it that kind of like buttery, somewhat buttery crust feel to it. So the whole pan kind of very thoroughly buttered. Now the thing, and I think this is almost what Pizza Hut does. I'm going to leave this water running because pretty soon it's going to be messy. But I want to say Pizza Hut does this too. And the fact that I also oiled the pan, again using some olive oil, the extra virgin. Kind of let it sit there. And kind of let the olive oil kind of bind. I think the thing is, because it's fat on, well, it's oil on oil. And if you know anything about science, both are hydrophobic. So it kind of binds to each other. And it actually smells pretty good too. So I like to 
It's going to bar it up again. Try and run it along the side as much as you can. Doesn't have to be exact. Um, with this, I don't like to have too much. What I will do, I'll pour just a little bit of this off. Not the whole thing, though. So there's still that nice kind of oil sheen to it. And it's all nice and actually well evened out. So butter goes away. And then this is actually the time where I add some seasoning to it. And as far as seasonings go, I'm going to add, really I'm just going to add some nature, some, oops, wrong way, that would be nasty. A little salt, pepper. Remember, the yeast have already done their job. So for the most part, the yeast are done. Salt, pepper. Some Italian seasoning. This actually gets embedded and actually cooked into the crust, which makes it, which, which gives, I think, the crust some pretty good flavor. And then very gently, a little garlic salt. This is where it's going to get messy, so this is what I'm actually going to do. And turn the water on. For the most part, you can actually kind of pour dough there. You can see how it kind of all comes out for the most part. With a little exception. So again, you have to kind of get your hand there. Scrape it up. But you see the oil makes it so much slicker though. And this is this has to get washed. The sink, the sink, the sink is filling up. So we're gonna fest it again. It tends to be a little bit more even. And remember you want to double proof this. And doing it this way, you're not actually poking holes. So we'll show you what it looks like. And it's a little bit easier for your personal cleanup. So again, it's not that bad. It's actually a lot cleaner than it probably should be. So I let this initially proof up for about an hour and a half. This will go for about another hour. And it really doesn't matter the fact that the oil came up a little bit, because that oil will actually help cook stuff. So this goes back in the oven to proof. Puff up a little bit more. And this is a double proof. And oh, I'll show it. It's still my, still my Christmas decor up. But there it is. This thing there, all nice and nice and toasty. And we'll be back. Okay, folks, so right now it's been probably about an hour. So let's see how this has puffed up. And as you can tell, the crust itself is pretty firm. All set. Now, what I like to do, I always like to twice bake the crust. Here, so let's put that there. And let's bake. I want to set it for about 400. I'm going to let this cook probably for about 20 minutes. Remember, I'm not trying to cook it through. I just want to get, get started. So it's part baked. And so I can actually press down on the crust. Now that it's started, I'm going to put it in for about 20 minutes. Into the oven it goes. Ooh, the oven, oven. There it is. And we'll be back in about 20. Okay, folks, for the most part, the par baking's done. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to turn the oven off. It actually smells really good. So it's not fully cooked yet. And you can still tell there's a couple soft spots, and that's actually exactly what you want. Because now, I'm going to find sear. A spoon here somewhere. So in order to find, to kind of form the pizza crust, what I like to do, I just like to take a, the back of a spoon. Doesn't really matter. 
and I like to press down and kind of break the crust a little bit. Because it's still not fully cooked on the inside. I'll show you kind of what I'm doing in a moment here. What I'm doing, I'm kind of pressing down. And I know it's not so much a technical term, but I'm kind of smushing things because right now this actually has the consistency for the most part of pie dough. And this is actually going to form a really nice well because you can actually see where parts of the dough is actually still raw. It's not, which actually is what you want for the most part because again it's a little bit more pliable. And once I form the crust, I'll put it in the oven just for a little bit longer. Again, I'm not that concerned with the fact that parts of it are raw. Remember, so, so again, here, we, you can kind of see what I did there. And back in the oven it goes. Remember, the oven's not, oven's warm, so it's still going to cook a little bit. You don't necessarily want that pure raw dough, but you want something that's par-baked. And then I'm going to start making the toppings for, so the pan out. And toppings for again the cheesesteak pizza. And I'll be okay, so the pizza's kind of in the oven doing its thing, kind of chilling out. So now we're going to get ready for the cheesesteak part. Little pan. Little pan is always helpful. And this is just ready for the toppings. So what I like to do, I like to use kind of metal spatulas. And let's see if I have the one still. It's clean. No, that's okay. So I can just chop things up a little bit. So I'm going to put that on. Sorry, no, it's here somewhere. No, it's here somewhere! That's one. That's one. Yeah, I like to use particular... I have different spatulas for different things. I have my egg spatula a little bit longer. I have the French fry one, and I have the thing that just holds stuff. It's mainly, it's just easier that way. So I have this. I like to use this. Just let me kind of give that a quick wipe down. My metal spatula. And first thing I just do is that no matter what, I just cook the meat first. Because actually, pretty soon, I'm going to start building the pizza. In fact, I'm going to take the pizza out of the oven to let it rest a little bit. And what I'm using is I have some thinly sliced beef. And quite honestly, in no particular way, make sure you do not get the plastic part. That would be bad. Yeah, it's thinly sliced, so it's easy to chop up. Cheesesteak meat, folks. And then again, always wash your hands and try and unless you know something's cold, don't put your hands on it. So I like to cook the meat and the peppers at the same time. That meat cook just a little bit. So you can hear it sizzle away. Oh, there we go. And you can see the seams. The thing with this meat is that it cooks really fast though. And that's primarily because it's so thin. Once you get it spread out, it could like anything. So let me get the pizza crust out so that it doesn't burn. So all the soft spots have kind of hardened up so the pizza crust is ready. And I just like to spread it out. And as soon as I can't remember, <laughs> shrinkage always occurs. Like that, and on this side, need some fresh veggies. Again, typically Philly style cheesesteaks, peppers, onions. Um, that's one of those things you kind of want to know how to do before you try it. The peppers on ends, hey, that's easy stuff. And hopefully it's chilly enough where I won't set off any smoke alarms. You can use any kind of mix you want. Ooh, something smells good though already. You can tell because if you see how quick it cooks.
So really just kind of flip stuff around. Then you have to two-hand it. And you get a nice even cooking surface flip. Flip. Remember, nothing raw could ever go on your pizza. That's not good stuff. So here, well, except for veggies, veggies are okay, raw. Let's see if I can open this up. There we go. So I have veggies on now. Nice little steam going. So I have that stuff going. And eventually mix them. See here, there. One of, one of the tricks that you actually can do with this, in order to kind of keep that steam there, and this actually cooks the veggies a little bit quicker. There we go. And while that's cooking, we take a look over here at the pizza. I'm going to start building the pizza now. Because, again, you want to pre-melt stuff. And what I have, I'm going to use some canned tomatoes. However spicy you like it, that's all up to you. Then you all just saw me, I guess I'll show you guys, open it up while that stuff's steaming together. Pour out most of the liquid juice. Don't necessarily need that until you get tomatoes popping out. And then again, you can use whatever instrument you desire. Get the lid open. And I'm going to start spreading the tomatoes because I'm not a big fan of tomato paste. My pizza, I like the taste of whole tomatoes. And try and get it out as even as you can. It's never going to be perfect. That's okay. That's why there's everything else there for, for that. That's done. Look back here, what we see, we see a nice steam happening. No, get out of there, cheese. Pie. And now what I like to do with because the meat's cooked, I like to mix that a little bit. The vendors have the proper stuff, so they kind of know what exactly to do right now. You're just kind of boiling off all the juice stuff. So again, I'll just let that steam a little bit. It's a little bit there, so it's somewhat controlled. Back here, going to now <laughs> cut the cheese. I always like to use fresh mozzarella. So this is kind of simple and basic. Let's see, I have a cutting board in here somewhere. There's a cutting board. So while that's going, steaming the vegetables a little bit. Let that steam for another minute or so. Just gonna open up the cheese and cut said cheese. And very simply turn the oven back on. So I turn the stove off, oven goes back on, about 420. On. Pizza goes in said oven. 
That's gonna get all nice and melty. So there we go, there's that. And you can tell the steak's nice and cooked. Kind of married the, the, the vegetables there a little bit. And we'll be coming back to that shortly. Probably about, oh, 10 minutes or whenever the cheese melts. So for the most part, the toppings are all set. I have some provolone cheese. The pizza's been going at 420 for a while. And you want it to cook, you want to cook that off. You want the first layer of cheese to melt. So now it's just going to, takes a little bit longer overall. So here we have, ah, oh, look at that beautiful pizza. And now what I like to do, very simply, mix some of this stuff up. Now, while the meat's thoroughly cooked, just, yep, there we go. Very simple. It's like they do, so for this, instead of bread, it doesn't matter if there's anything left over, it's not gonna last long anyway. I'm sure there's gonna be some leftover provolone. We'll snack while this is cooking. Let's see everything. Cheese steak, kind of spread throughout. And this honestly is gonna take probably another 20 minutes to cook. Get some more peppers on the side. And it's not a proper, I want some meat over there. Care more peppers and more onions, always good, no such thing. So here, spread things out a little bit. That's pretty good. Trust me, that meat's not gonna last too long. And over there. And it's not a proper Philly cheesesteak. That's some sliced provolone cheese. Again, it's not going to last too long. I'm going to make sure this stuff gets finished pretty soon. And hopefully I'll let myself, I'll let my poor little phone charge up. Then let's put it on top, remember. And we'll push down. In this case, the cheese actually acts like a topping. snack for myself. And hoodie back in the oven it goes. And we'll be back. See, pizza in the oven. About 20 more minutes. So Ash, so hello folks. Well actually the pizza is all done. So let me set this up here. what it looks like. It looks freaking amazing. It's still hot. So the crust is a nice kind of golden brown texture to it so it looks done. And kind of the, always the hardest thing to do. I don't know what it is with pies and pizza but for some reason this first slice is always the worst. So time to get a the Osimo cutter. Yep the serrated one. So let's try and cut this into some pieces here. Cuts through the slice. Top is pretty good. And the crust itself feels done. There's a little give to it, which is always a good sign. Toppings are flying everywhere though. So that's why I'm kind of doing it this way. So meat really doesn't necessarily want to cut. That's okay. And the meat always has a problem cutting through. 
That feels like it cut through pretty easily. Like butter almost. Not to go in there. I have to clean the sink. So here, the ultimate test though of any pizzas, how well, or any pie actually. We just have to get the edges. For some reason, they're the killers. The pizza killer. It's a deep dish pizza, so it is a little bit difficult to get underneath. The first piece is always the toughest, though. I don't care what it is. Oh, that actually came out really good. I couldn't slide the knife under anything. Yeah, that's just a weird thing. Oh, look at that golden crust. That looks so good. Yeah, once you get the first piece out, again, so much easier. Look how much easier it comes out that way. It's just that, and the same is true with pie and cake. If you can get that first slice, is always a freaking mess. So let's make my presentation. Yes. This is the ultimate thing now. And unfortunately there's gonna be no impact wrestling because Oh wow that charge held a little bit longer than I thought it would. Because it's just not on. I think they're doing a best of show. So with this, let's see here. Look at all that. Oh, look at that feast. I have my kind of regular champagne, and then later for my toast, the blue champagne, baby. A little bit of bubbly. I'd like to wish everyone a happy New Year's. And be safe. Have fun. And may everyone a proper New Year. Yes. Bye.